the action man. I love the background. Oh, thank you. Thank you. The girl. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Just a pirate chasing booty, the shirt to match. The action man, Chris Curtis, joins the podcast today to talk about his upcoming fight. Uh, Chris, thanks for joining. How are you doing? I'm good, man. I am uh, I'm fucking tired, but I'm good. You're training hard, huh? Dude, it's uh, it's been like four months of camp, and I'm just I'm tired. I am ready to be done. I'm ready to fight. So four months of camp is that because of the uh, the Duplessis fight? Yeah, because uh, I got hurt at the end of that camp, so I didn't stop training. I just kind of trained around it and just kept training. And then this fight came up, so we rolled into this one. So it's just been like going on going on five months of like camp. For in one fight at this point, I'm just like, oh my god, I'm just so is tired. Is there any concern that you're overtrained for it? I'm overtrained for I'm overtrained for every fight. <laughs> like every single fight ever, I'm overtrained for, so it's it's no different. I feel good. I'm in great shape. Like uh, I've been on a really solid conditioning, safe conditioning program since uh, like the PI and everything. So physically, I feel phenomenal, man. I feel great. Like I absolutely wonderful. It's just I've been overtrained for every fight ever, so. That's nothing new. I'm just reached yeah, the point where like, oh, I just want to fight. <clears throat> so I got a bone to pick with you. What would I do? Okay, so I live 20 minutes from Brendan Allen. Okay. Why you did my boy like that? Hey, I love Brendan Allen. I talk to Brendan Allen all the time. I love Brendan Allen. Like the dude is, he's a goofball. He's a good, I like the, I like the dude. I really, really like Brendan Allen. I was actually gonna go out to Sanford to uh, get some work in with him, but like scheduling was just stupid because of the uh, the wrist injury. I love yeah, Brendan Allen, dude. I love Brendan Allen. I'm kidding, man. I'm kidding. I love it, though. But it was funny. I was like, oh, it was tough because, like, I like Brendan Allen, but I'm not, like, super invested in him like I am with, like, Dustin Poirier because I'm from Louisiana. Uh, like, yeah. So I was exactly. like, man, I really like Chris, and I'm really pulling for him, but I also like the Louisiana guy. So, you know, I'm going to abstain this fight. But I'm not going to lie. Your run has just been great, honestly. Um what's the reception been like for you because like the fans love it the fans love it. you're an old school type fighter you go in there you box and you knock people out it's great yes. i live a i'm a very simple man with simple uh simple fight goals like trying to go in there and hit you really hard like a lot yeah it keeps it keep simple but like i remember I, I watched you before the contender series but it's kind of where you 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 blew up a little bit was on the contender series and you know you were snubbed let's be honest it was a yeah. beautiful hook kick, some punches, and that's what the contender series want. And that's what, you know, they want everybody else now. And you go in and you go, you fight Andre Fialo, who's on fire right now, Magomed, Magomed Karadoff, uh, Ray Cooper, and then I think Magomed against in PFL. Yeah. Uh, you go to Fight Night, Icon, Fierce, XMMA, and then you get the call up. You know, you were in and out. You're like, maybe I should fight, maybe I shouldn't. What was that like, man? Just trying to get your way into the UFC for all these years. What was that, what was the mental hard, aspect man. of it like? I started I started MMA 15 years ago with the goal would be a UFC fighter, and like I've seen teammates get that call. I've seen people I beat get that call. I've seen people I know that I beat get that call. It's just frustrating always being like one's just and it's stuff out of your control. And the contenders fight was insane because. He's like, oh, he wants guys going there and get after it right away is what he said. Well, then the next episode, he signed two guys who won off decisions. And I'm like, what? Like, I mean, and I did, I I did that tennis fight with a broken hand and a torn groin. Right. I tore my groin the week before that fight. I broke my hand the first punch I threw. Gosh. Still did it. And it's just, it's just, it's frustrating, man, to all, you know, always feel like I lost a lot of years just for stuff out of my control. But, it's whatever, man. I'm here now. I got a few years left. Just want to make the most of it. And like, you know, you can't dwell on uh, feeling snubbed anymore. I did it for a long time, but I'm about to be 35, man. I can't dwell on being feeling snubbed. I've got a few years left, a few good years left in me. So I just want to go hard and uh, go from there. I love it. I love it. Now, one fight I'd like to see back is you and Fial Hill. Um, y'all's first fight in PFL was fun, and he's in the UFC knocking everybody out, too. Uh, but is there any like dream match right now that you have that you'd like in the future? Uh, I don't know, man. I don't even care. Like <laughs> at this point, man, honest to God, I just want to fight. Like I, I just want to fight. I want to, I, I just want good fights to try to like win bonuses. 
Okay. I don't really. I can't think of a name right now because it's like. Yeah. I'm trying to think who's in this division. Like I don't. Even, I don't even know. I don't. I don't care, man. I just want to fight people. Like I'm, I'm 35. I don't. I'm not. I'm not. I don't have time to pick names and wait. I'm just trying to fight whoever's around. Like whoever's the best chance for me to get a bonus. Like, let's fight that guy. Yeah. Somebody so, to make it interesting. You, you need a good dance partner. So like, just give me a good dance partner, and we'll go. I say, it. well, you do got a good dance partner. You've had good dance partners. You got another good one with Rodolfo Vieira. Um, he's a little different from who you fought in the UFC so far. Uh, not saying you haven't had, you know, fighters with jujitsu background, but Rodolfo is a little bit different from from anybody yeah. else. He's high level. Um, yeah. You know, what's what's preparation like for a guy like that who's so good at one thing that it's like, oh, I gotta I gotta kind of be careful with this on the ground. Which I mean, you don't fight on the ground as much um but you know still he he's still a threat there you know what i mean so for me it's funny because nothing really changes because my goal is to always avoid prolonged grappling exchanges like good grappling defense and return to my feet so nothing really changes in the preparation because this is like the fight that i'm always prepared against anyway right um I think I, mean, I was I was talking to Gary Tonin before his fight. He's like, nobody's harder to take down than somebody. Nobody's harder to uh, submit than someone who doesn't want to get taken down. So, yeah, I guess that kind of fits. I, I'm, I'm well known for submission defense, man. I'm very well known for my submission defense. I've been submitted once in 36 fights. <laughs> and that was like 10 years ago. That's nuts. Uh, yeah, I've been submitted. Been, exactly. I'm really well known for my submission defense. And my wrestling these last three years, the last few years, made a huge, uh, huge leaps and bound change, especially training at Extreme Couture full-time now. My wrestling night and day different than it was in PFL. Right. And uh, I've got a lot more, uh, I've got some great wrestling partners and coaches. And, you know, uh, for this camp, we've got uh, my stand-in for wrestling for Rodolfo was Albert Derev, who is by far the most oppressive top grappler I've ever come across. Like, <laughs> I, it's... Abs- I mean, it's, oppressive it's, is a word I've never heard. This is the word. It is. He is an oppressive top grappler to where like there are very few people who can like hold me down for extended periods. I'll get up. He'll drag me back down. He has oppressive top grappling. <laughs> so, you know, he's fighting Buckley uh, next week. So we've been in camp together. You know, pushing each other, and he's made me so much better, man. And like you know, he may not have the pure jiu-jitsu credentials as uh Rodolfo but you put those two in a fight I'm choosing Albert 10 out of 10 times because like the dude's just a savage like Machete's a good name and you know that's the guy I've been, I've been like battling with on the ground for the last eight nine weeks and nothing really changes because it's just a fight that I'm used to man I feel good uh you gotta be smart because on the ground obviously you know the ground is lava you're playing with fire but I think when it comes down to it, I think my wrestling is better than Rodolfo's wrestling. And I think I'll be able to stop him and make him work harder than he wants to work. It's going to be a fun fight. It's one of those old school stylistic matchups. And and those are the ones that are the most fun a lot of the times. It's, it's you know, striker versus grappler. Who wins? It's the old yep. school UFC days. You know what I mean? And this, this is going to be interesting. We both have very clear paths to win. And so I've got to knock him. I've got to knock him out before he struggles with unconscious. So like that's a... <laughs> I'm putting Chris Curtis by guillotine in my parlay. Hey, I told that one. I would go by guillotine. Like, I, I think like the fluffy one was definitely the outlier. Like, all right, but like, yeah, you know, I don't think it's gonna happen again. But uh, nah, I I think with second or third round, I can stop him. I think I can. Wait, so what would be the least likely submission for you to pull off? You think? Twister. <laughs> you didn't even hesitate. <laughs> I'll, I'll go twister and triangle. I have like tiny legs, so it's really hard for me to triangle people because I have like, very short legs. Have you uh, you ever thought about boxing in in before you were in the UFC? Have, was that ever uh, I, crossed your mind? I started with boxing. I'm actually oh, I have okay. a pro boxing record of six and zero. Uh, oh I started God. with boxing the first thing. Yeah, so I, boxing is still my first love, but I just invested more time in MMA once I got older and I kind of fell in love with it. But boxing is still my first love. But you know. My goal was to like get in the UFC, so I kind of like put everything aside to do that because I wanted to be the best at something. I want to be one of the best at something. So, so I kind of got two questions here. Um, I'm gonna do them one at a time. First one is like my my for clicks article. Uh, would you box Jake Paul? I would maul Jake Paul. I wouldn't even <laughs> box Jake Paul because Jake Paul is mediocre at the very best. I would absolutely. 
<laughs> I would dog walk Jay Paul. Like it wouldn't even be hard. Like it's That'd be great. He's very he's very intelligent for like selectively picking like retired wrestlers to box <laughs> because he's oh my god. He like, tried Tommy Fury, but I, I think that was a bad fight for him. Honestly, he, he he's so lucky Fury got hurt. Tommy Fury would have yeah. busted his ass. <laughs> he he like oh you're dodging. He's so lucky Fury has big hands. Like Fury always has hands at him. And he's got a history of hand injuries. Right. He's really lucky because Tommy Fury would have busted his ass. He it would wouldn't have. have been funny. It wouldn't have been close. Tommy Fury would have busted Jake Paul's ass. Hey, so I, I feel like you kind of you, you don't like Jake Paul in boxing. Is that is that what I'm getting here? He's so okay. It's not that I don't like Jake Paul boxing. Like good for him boxing. He's gotten better, but like there are amateurs who would run him down. And yeah. like I know it's it's just like coming from boxing. I'm like, bro, come on. Like you're not. Did you it's see? It's just just the media machine. I'm like, I know, I know, fucking amateur kids who would drag you and like you just oh. Just. Did you see uh Jake Paul? He uh, he was talking to Eddie Hearn before the Seriano fight. Eddie Hearn was like, "Yeah, I got an Olympian that'll box you right now. He won a bronze medal." And Jake was like, "Uh, uh." Yeah, bro. Yeah, he doesn't like. like He's not dumb. Let's be real. You're 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 a YouTuber who's like you know took a few boxing classes. You're doing great for a beginner. Cool, but like, don't come out here. And with your fake little belt and all your bullshit, and like say, oh, I beat Tyron Woodley and uh, fucking uh, Ben Askren. Like you beat two retired wrestlers. Good job. <laughs> Tyron okay. Woodley's never been a good striker. Like it's just the threat of wrestling got him through a lot of things. He's never been a striker. He got a, a right hand. That's it. But she throws like twice around. And then you've got Ben Askren who doesn't have any idea what striking. Is. Like, stop it. He doesn't punch. Stop it. <laughs> I interviewed Ben before that fight. Um, and Ben was like, he's a non-athlete wannabe fighter. I was like, uh oh. <laughs> yeah, but come on, Ben. Ben, ben Askren. Have you ever seen Ben Askren successfully land a punch anywhere? Like on the ground? It. Just stop it. Like even that's even that's rare. Stop it. Like it's. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I'm gonna go into my my yeah. more serious question here. Um, so you did you started out boxing? I have this idea. I don't know if it's a good idea or not, but like fighters who want to do MMA. I feel like they should go out and do as many jujitsu competitions, boxing matches, and kickboxing matches possible. Um, I feel like that gives them experience. I mean, it's not a complete experience, but I feel like, you know, if you're going out, you're getting put in the fire as a striker primarily, and you go and box. I feel like there's some there's some advantage to that. And you, somebody who's done it, I kind of want to get your take on that. Like, do you think I, that's actually? I agree, hundred percent. I have amateur boxing matches. I have like uh, I've just kickboxing. Like it's, I had what, like 22 amateur MMA fights. I think if you're going to do something, you should break it down into the components and learn to be good at the components. Right. But I wish I had done a lot more grappling tournaments, like grappling when I was young. I did a grappling tournament like two years ago, the first time ever. <laughs> but I should have been doing that because it's just, it's just more time in the fire, as you said. Right. But if you want to do MMA, you need to break down the components and go do those components because – it's like a take, take a striker, take a boxer, you teach a boxer to wrestle. In MMA, what do you do to teach a boxer to wrestle? You teach him to counter wrestle, right? Right. So he's never learning to wrestle. So if you never actually learn to wrestle, you're never comfortable wrestling. You're always thinking, I have to stop the shot and do whatever. But if you teach a guy how to wrestle offensively and defensively as the entire package, he's never worried about having to just stop the shot because he knows how to wrestle. He knows how to stop the shot. He knows how to use his own shot to set stud up. He knows how to like, you know, create scrambles and like, uh, you know, like outwork. It's, you need to know the components. And the only way right. to get the components is to train the components separately and then compete in that component separately to where, you know, if you're a striker, if you go put me in a wrestling tournament, I can't lean on, you know, as a striker, you put me in MMA or in an MMA uh, fight or uh, practice. I'll lean on my boxing to like have to kind of nullify some of the wrestling. Right. You take that away from me, taking it away from me and making me wrestle and pure, a pure wrestling like situation is the only way I'm going to beat that fear and like beat that tendency to rely on what I'm good at. It's like, yeah, I 100% agree. You should be doing everything in components. And then you put it once you like you've done boxing, wrestling, jiu jitsu, boxing. And then you can go do back to MMA and put it all together because now you're comfortable and familiar with all those four, those core four tenets. I 100% agree. So let's be honest here too. Now the promotional aspect of it, MMA is gravitating towards boxing and that's going to bring 
fourth um, tune-up matches, which a lot of people hate. I'm one of them that don't like that, but I also see the purpose in them. So, like, for example, I think Canelo should have taken a tune-up match at light heavyweight before he took on Bivol because he yeah, got his so, ass whooped. So, so. He should never have fought Bill. Yeah, well, yeah, like probably that. not. But he should have taken a tune-up to see how the weight feels. Just like John yeah, Jones was, doesn't need to fight Francis first. He was talking about fighting that uh, the African guy, good and whatever his name was good. And I was yeah, but that like, was a big cruiser weight. That was yeah, even I higher. was like, I was like, bro, like, what are we doing right now? Like, it's no He's tune-up match is going to fix that. <laughs> <laughs> but back to what I was saying, promotional. That, that's going to save your record because the record is going to become everything now that Khabib's going undefeated. Um, we're going to see it like Marciano and Floyd, uh, undefeated fighters in court. So much. I do too, but that's where it's going to go. Um, my, my favorite era of boxing were the Four Kings era where you had like Duran, Leonard. So, like, nine fights. And, 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 yeah, even, even before, like, you had a like, Duran, Leonard, uh, Hearns. And yeah. fucking uh, yeah, like it's so like even those times or that that in Hagler, like you know they had losses, but you didn't care because That's they were the fights. best fighting the best. So you catch a loss, so what? You got you lost to one of the other like best guys. Or look at like uh, Sugar Ray Robinson and those guys. Like you know they all had losses, but you didn't care. Like I hate this undefeated bullshit that yeah, like the for sports sure. have gravitated towards. That's yeah. the one bad thing as we move towards that like. You know, singularity with the boxing mindset is it's happening. You put too much emphasis on the O. Yeah, and like it's just the thing is in MMA, it's so stupid because there's so many more ways to lose in MMA. Yeah, so like, it's just, oh, I hate that so much. That's why you it's, take boxing yeah. matches, kickboxing. That's why you go let Senchai beat up on you in Thailand. All that you you don't yeah, you, get you get that just experience. It. Plus, it, it, it's it's and it's good. It's like you said, it's good promotion. But like yeah. you, it, it's fine. But like. Yeah, and then again, you know, Dana doesn't want to see his guy get beat up in True. boxing matches and whatever because it devalues your product. So yeah, it's a, it's a slippery slope. Yeah, you're right. But I think I think a big part of that can be fixed though if you stop having these guys go pro with three fights. Yeah, yeah, I I, I like a lot of the amateur guys coming up. Um, like Muhammad Makayev is is one of my favorites right now. He has a really extensive amateur record, and I feel like that's done him greatly, uh, giving him. Benefits. I don't want to 18 and four as an amateur. <laughs> you have you you mentioned it. I didn't know you had 20 uh amateur yeah. fights, but yeah, you had a lengthy amateur career too. I and that helped so you. like I, I despise guys. So two things that kill me, and I'll take catch black for this. I hate guys that go pro with like under 10 fights. I think you're a fucking idiot <laughs> for going pro with under 10 fights. And I hate this thing with the UFC to where they sign guys with under 10 fights. How many times you see a guy yeah. get signed? It's got like five fights, six fights. Now he's in the UFC, getting his brain punched in. Gets drops three fights. He's getting. He's got five fights. He drops three. And he gets cut. That I'm happened like, to Sage. Sage North cut what, that happened too. What was the point, man? Because like he's not he's not a finished product yet. He's not ready. He's not even like ready. You know, like look at like pizza. Like look, it's, it's it's like it's like fucking making a pizza, bro. Like you get ten fights. You're not the biggest pizza, but you got all the toppings, everything ready. You're ready to go in the oven, right? The UFC is the oven. You get a guy in there with three, four fights. Like, you're throwing some fucking, like, cheese on dough without any sauce, whatever. Some American no cheese. Toppings. You're putting it in there. You're just like, fuck it. You know, like, it, it, it'll be edible. We'll see what happens. Like, what's well, going to suck? <clears throat> it's probably going to suck. Like, yeah. yeah, like, you're not, you're not putting me, you're not getting it right. You're not prepping it. Right. I hate seeing people in the UFC under 10 fights. And every now Absolutely. and then. Every now and then they find a Kobe Bryant who can come out of high school and compete in the NBA every now and then. Exception, not the rule, man. Exactly. Like, the exception, and not the, the NBA like, no longer accepts high school players anymore. You got to go through college a year. So, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. I think, I think the contender series is going to end a lot of careers prematurely. Yeah, I do. And I also think it's going to hurt a lot of promotions like LFA, Cage Warriors and all that. Because they're gonna have to feed the contender three, series. Three, four fights, yeah. You snatched it out four or five take contenders, not even the UFC. So now you went from like LFA is a really well known feeder builder league, yeah. right? But what's the point of that if you're snatching a guy before he's even fucking done? You know, yeah, it's like it's like rotisserie and meat, like you only get fucking got one side cooked, you fucking go serve him. Like, yeah. well, it's not gonna be the product that you wanted. Like it's just it's I think right. contenders is gonna ruin a lot of careers. Yeah, I think so too. So uh, I got two more questions for you. One's kind of silly. Um, it's a five round main event booked between you and One Punch Man. Um, what's your game plan? How do you beat One Punch Man? 
Well, all right, all right. So, you know, I'm a big Garo fan. Well, so I'm going to. Okay. Let's do the background. Got, yeah, of Pokemon course. I, well, I was going to say One Punch Man. I was going to remind you that Marlon Marais looks exactly like One Punch Man, also. But so I would spike my hair and go fight Marlon Marais. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man, five round fight. You got to. Because, damn, because even. Hmm. I'd imagine it'd be like a lot like fighting Francis. Yeah, just like can't get touched. Yeah. So like, it, it would have to be like the Garo, like, was it a. Uh, water crushing rock you just can't let them actually touch you you just have to keep countering and like <laughs> over the, the, the rock until he fucking serious punches you and then it's over so know, that's it's just the unbeatable, it's the unbeatable fight man it really yeah. is he really he's invincible he really is all yeah. right so last so question man before i let up. you go i don't want to keep you too long man but last question before i let you go why should everybody tune in on the 25th and watch you and rodolfo Vieira? i know a lot of my viewers will know, but let's let's talk to the layman. Um, we, said, we said it, man. It, this is one of those more rare fights in uh, 2022. We're getting an old school matchup like striker versus grappler, man. Uh, I need to knock him out, and he needs to strangle me. So I don't think this is a fight that's going to go to the uh, judges' cards, man, because we've both got very, very clear ways to win. And we're both going to try like hell to get, uh, you know, to enforce our game plan there. So we both have to win by finish. That's just the way we fight. He's not going to like beat me in a, in a he's not going to out cardio me. And I'm probably not going to like not get strangled over three rounds of grappling. So we both need to finish. So we're going to go out there and try to kill each other. Awesome. So Chris Curtis by a twister in my parlay is what I'm putting. Okay. You put that too. Dude, those <laughs> suck. Those are terrible. But the parlays are good. No, no. Twisters. I, twisters I are terrible. Out, it's, 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 I've seen some people have tried. I'm just like, first of all, sir, I am very big. You're not going to twist for me. And I'm just I'll gonna stand you. up. So, I, I'll, I'll, I'll bite you. I don't care. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, don't care. Like, yeah, like, like, oh, you bit him. I'm like, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, I thank you, man. It's been fun. Where can everybody find you on social media? Uh, you guys hit me up on Instagram and Twitter at actionman513. It's the same for both now. And uh, cause I stopped being weird and got one handle for everything. So yep, actionman513, hit me up, shoot me a message, guys. Heck yeah. Chris, thank you. I'll be pulling for you, man, and have a good one. Thanks, bro. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you no later. problem.